from a market sentiment perspective, I've been trading 20 odd years and I've seen many manias um, over this time. Who's coming in buying Bitcoin right now? That's my biggest question. Could we see a second wave in the stock markets? Maybe not with the same ferocity that we saw back in, in March. What's up, YouTube? My name is Jackson. Today, I'm here with trader Charlie Burton and co-founder of Genesis Block Hong Kong, Clement Ip. How's it going today, guys? Very good. Thanks. Nice to see you. Thanks. Yeah, great. Thanks for having us. Awesome. So Bitcoin recently broke above 7K and seems to be holding for now. With this move, Bitcoin broke the key level of 6,800 to 6,900 identified by Michael Vandepop a couple weeks ago. Uh, what I want to see with the price right now is just that we reclaim, reclaim a previous support level, which is 6,869. Until we don't do that, I expect further downside to come. It's just pure technical levels. Do you believe Bitcoin will continue its upward momentum? Let's start with you, Charlie. I mean, do, do I think that uh, 68 to 6,900 level, it's okay. It's this sort of zone down here. I still think there's more. The, the market needs to do more yet before that really becomes that important. If I just put a pen up here, this is the sort of area we're, we're talking about here. It's only just popped its head above there. I think that just a few days, this is a daily chart here. I don't think it means too much. Um, for me, Bitcoin would really need to go a bit higher before... Um, it, it becomes anything much more uh, significant. I still think it's got a bit bit further to go before I would um, say that um, it's um, it's out of the woods, um, certainly at the moment, especially as it seems to have been um, moving in, in sync with the US stock markets, with like the S&P and the likes, we're seeing this correlation there. And um, at some point, they'll probably do another bit of a pullback and we'll see how Bitcoin reacts then as well. But, um, but, you know, it's encouraging signs, certainly, that it's, that it's popped up. But I would like to see it well above 8,000 before I start getting that excited. Clement, do you see Bitcoin continuing its upward momentum? Yeah, so, I mean, uh, us at Genesis Block, we run an OTC desk and we have a prop desk as well. Um, it's just been really weird the last couple of weeks. Um, we haven't seen a lot of flow coming in, uh, especially in Asia. We're based in Hong Kong. Um, March was a great month for us, um, a, a shit ton of, uh, volatility it went, it went down all the way down to like 4k. And we, we did see a lot of people coming in buying Bitcoin, uh, queues were starting to, um, ramp up on ATM machines and, um, um, and, but this, the last couple of weeks, this run up has been really, really quiet. We've been speaking to other big desks as well. And. It's just been extremely quiet. Like even with uh, people trying to move money with like Tether or uh, using Bitcoin, like it's just been really quiet because of the coronavirus. So um, don't know. Like I mean, um, I I'm not convinced. Uh, I think uh, if I had to put a bet on, um, I don't think we're we're, we're going to head towards like any anything further. Maybe we'll come back down at seven five. That's my guess. Um, but I'm on the sideline right now. In our previous uh, crypto market discussion, CEO of CoinRoutes, Dave Weisberger, said that Bitcoin could be forming a bottom at six to seven in the six to seven k range. I think we're in the process of a bottoming process in the six thousand to seven thousand range. Do you think that Bitcoin is currently in the process of bottoming? From a market sentiment perspective, I've been trading twenty odd years, and I've seen many manias um, over this time. The it's like this second wave where it'll suck a load of investors in again, only to then you know see what what happened after sort of July time of last year. The Bitcoin cat sold off again, and it might that might have been that that second wave which enables a lot of other people to throw in the towel, and then you get your hardcore who will stay at it. And I think that's possibly where we're at now, and we are in a longer term bottoming process. So. Yes, I believe we are. But um, what I would like to see, I've put a trend line on my chart here, and I would love to see Bitcoin get above there. So if we just said roughly 10,000, we get above there, and I think it's a way. Um, but um, but I, I think when I was last on, I was sort of saying that this could be a, like a year to 18 month formation process. I don't think it's going to just take off and just go straight for the hills at all. Clement, what's your perspective on this idea of Bitcoin's bottoming process? Um, 
Specifically on 6-7K, um, I have some concerns here. I mean, uh, we have Havening coming out um, in around 40 days. Um, I think a good benchmark would be um, Litecoin. If you look at Litecoin, I think there's a lot of hype coming up on this whole having thing. Um, reality is, um, th I don't think this third halving is going to have much effect. We're going to be down to 900 coins production a day. Um, what I'd really like to see is uh, more people come in the space. Um, when we saw 2013, that was really fueled by um, the Chinese. Uh, and then 2017 was uh, the Koreans. Um, that created a huge overcharge opportunity. And that's where, you know, um, a lot of organic flow really comes in. Um, I think this entire year, like, I mean, there's a lot of people doing futures trades, uh, but reality is like new people coming in the space is nothing compared to like what we saw in 2017. So, um, and saying that, like, I think um, with all the futures, um, um, there's so many futures exchanged now, uh, in my opinion, I think uh, manipulation is also a lot easier. So it really depends on this uh, whole coronavirus thing as well. I mean, there's so many factors to look into. So um, I'm not convinced that we're bottoming at 6, 7K. Um, but it's, um, yeah, in order to see like um, Bitcoin to go go up even more, like I, I think um, it's, it's uh, we're going to have to need a lot of um, organic, real organic volume buying spot. So you feel that uh, Bitcoin's like next major upward movement is more dependent on uh, adoption and reaching a critical level of involvement in the space? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think uh, at this level, um, anything could happen. I mean, we saw swings of like, you know, $2,000 up and down. Um, I mean, we were at 10K when everyone was really excited, just like in February, right? And then uh, we hit we dropped like 6,000 points, um, close to 6,000 points. And um, in the space of a month, uh, we close to double, doubling up now. Um, so crazy amount of volatility. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, who's coming in buying Bitcoin right now? That's my biggest question. I mean, we've been very, very quiet. Um, people are not even interested in um, maybe the online stuff. But for us, like we've been hosting a lot of like physical events to teach people what Bitcoin is, how to set a wallet and all that stuff. Um, we're not seeing any of that. And um, so uh, interesting times right now. Mm -hmm. Charlie, are you also looking at it this perspective in terms of when is the next, next big wave of buyers coming in? When are we going to reach that critical mass of adoption? Well, again, you know, it all comes back down to trader psychology. You get back above 10,000 and more people will start saying, oh, maybe I should be doing something with Bitcoin again and some of the cryptocurrencies. So um, it does seem to work that way. It's the same in any market, whether it's the stock markets. People don't buy the stock markets when they're down at the lows. When the stock markets were down, the S&P was down at its lows two weeks ago, most people weren't buying it then. They were running for the hills. You could see that. And the outflows of people pulling their monies out, monies out of their pension funds and their 401ks and, and whatever. And it's the same as what Clement was saying here about Bitcoin. It's been very quiet from what you're seeing there over the last few weeks. And of course, you know, people are, are worried about their jobs and uh, you know their incomes and everything else. But um, psychologically, it'll only be once, um, in my view, once we get above some milestones that you then, you then start to see investors saying, oh, actually, yes, I should be getting back involved in this. So speaking of milestones, you mentioned 8K as being one of those milestones earlier. And Cointelegraph contributor Phil Philb recently published a market analysis suggesting that if Bitcoin's momentum were to carry it past 8K, Bitcoin would enter a bull market. However, two traders who have correctly predicted Bitcoin cycles in the past both believe Bitcoin could reach 8.5K before plummeting down to 3K in the near future. What do you think the likelihood of that reversal move is of occurring? Anything in the markets can happen. Um, but I think that this flush down move that we've had, all right, that was in sync with the stock markets. And it's really going to, what will be key is whether the stock markets come down, but roll back over and make new lows. Because if they do, then we probably will see Bitcoin come over and make new lows below that 4,000 that we made just uh, a few weeks ago. So 
I, I wouldn't necessarily agree with those, what those traders are saying, going to eight and a half and then coming back down to 3,000. But I understand why they might say it, because again, that could be another clean out move um, in, in that market. But I don't see anything technically to say that it has to come down to three and a half, uh, back down to 3,000 at the moment. So could we see a second wave in the stock markets? Maybe not with the same ferocity that we saw back in, in March um, with that type of sell-off, but maybe we see a gradual sell-off sell back down to at least retest the lows. That could still happen yet. If it doesn't happen, then I see no reason why Bitcoin would need to go back down to 3,000. But if we do see the S&P and the stock markets coming back down to test their lows, then we could well see uh, Bitcoin do the same. Yeah, I agree with uh, Charlie there. Um, I think the thing is like when it, when it does hit 8.5, uh, I think a lot of people in the space, in the crypto space, will get a bit excited, um, which we are seeing like a lot of people. So how I, I see this entire cycle is like 2017, you have a bunch of people uh, coming into the space um, that don't know how to trade derivatives. Then they're, 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 they're just flipping um, ICO coins. Uh, 2018 was dead. 2019 was a year that, you know, um, BitMEX made a ton of money, um, which means like, a lot more people learn how to trade on leverage. Um, it's just more exciting for them uh, because there's no ICO coins for them to flip. Um, and uh, what we saw, you know, a couple of months back was like uh, funding rate reached record high. Uh, a lot of people were in longs um, and got completely wiped out. So maybe it's definitely possible, you know, when we hit 8.5, um, we will see more people coming in and thinking that it will go past 10. Um, and up and beyond because of having, um, who knows? Um, but if that does happen, then it would be, um, um, it would be, uh, I mean, the big whales out there could wipe them out. Um, it could retest the lows. Um, I think it's absolutely possible, but it depends how many people believe um, um, that this will happen. And looking to the more longer term, uh, many of our previous guests believe that the federal bank strategies of Quantitizing e unlimited quantitative easing will propel Bitcoin to safe haven status. W what is your take on this narrative, Clement? Yeah, um, I think uh, so. If um, people who are watching this um, don't have a position in Bitcoin or looking into um, investing in Bitcoins, then I think you know um, these are great times. I mean. Uh, Bitcoin all time high was nearly at 20k. Um, if you want to get into Bitcoin, these are like these are great times to look into it and really take some action. Um, I think the whole narrative of Bitcoin is like there's only 21 million coins ever going to be minted, and there's going to be less and less uh, supply. Um, um, I think it's a great time for you to accumulate uh, sensibly um, because the dollar is just gonna at some point it's just gonna blow up i mean um not just the dollar but like i mean um i think the uk even is is is, is giving people so much money at some point i have no idea how they're gonna pay their debts um so i think once the virus is over then i think um governments feds will will, will at some point we need to answer these questions and and that that will be a very very good time um, for um, Bitcoin to shine. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on this, Charlie? Um, I think that um, yeah, good points made there again. But the and the uh, with the uh, the huge amount of money that's being printed, especially uh, we're seeing it in Western governments and um, the US, especially uh, if the US has some sort of U shape recovery. Um, I say U-shaped, not V-shaped. I don't see, see that happening. But uh, some sort of U-shaped, a longer recovery. But if we get beyond this crisis, then um, with all of that amount of dollar printing that's going on, then what we'll see is, uh, we should see is a weakening of the dollar. And so and this is important when it comes to Bitcoin here, because all of the time that we've been in a crisis, money goes to the dollar, and that's what we've been seeing um, it over the recent weeks. But as, as investors around the world feel more comfortable, then um, all of this printing of, of dollars that's out there, um, at some point, there's going to have to be a devaluation, a marked devaluation in the dollar. 
And when we get that devaluation of the dollar, then other assets such as gold could continue to do well. And we're already seeing gold doing quite well recently um, in that regard. And also Bitcoin. I always find it funny of um, you, uh, mentioning people mentioning uh, Bitcoin being a um, a safe haven <laughs> because I've always seen it as quite volatile. And um, you know, but the, the the fundamentals behind it, the blockchain behind it, yes. And there's a lot of uh, huge potential going forwards in the future. We're also seeing you know um, a lot more um, really user friendly wallets happening. Um, even phone companies are you know embedding uh, wallets within their phone um and i mean i think like as soon as more people starts to believe um um that you know or they want to own one bitcoin then it's very natural that against the dollar i mean price will just go up yeah and the and the um and you, you've hit the nail on the head there it's making it easier for for the average joe to own some bitcoin where the average Joe, the average person on the street, hasn't necessarily got in. Um, some did, and they got burnt. But next time round, with the ease of getting into these cryptocurrencies, um, it's going to be a very different thing. Great. Well, thank you guys for coming on the show today. I really appreciate your time and the conversation. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks again. Nice to meet you, Clement. Nice to meet you, Charlie. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.